you're looking here at a robot that's doing the disinfecting work. It's first test of its kind in Canada right now, and we want to show you and tell you a little bit more about it and the pilot project going on. Dr. Bruce Mazur is with me this morning, immunologist, interim executive director of the Research Institute of the McGill University Health Center, obviously in Montreal. Dr. Mazur, great to have the, on the program. Thank you for being my guest. Good morning, Heather. Thank you very much for having me on. Let's let's come back to the pictures again. I know you can't see them from your screen, Dr. Mazur, but I'm going to bring them in for our viewers, and we can see the robot at work. Tell us, it's kind of a simple-looking creation, I guess, but tell us more about the robot itself and what it does. So, the, as you said, it's a very simple concept, but uh, beautifully smart in its simplicity. Um, it's really, I, I've been saying it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup, two terrific <laughs> ideas put together. Um, <laughs> the top of the robot is a UV tower, which has a whole bunch of ultraviolet light bulbs in a uh, 360 degree circle. These light bulbs emit uh, UVC radiation. UVC radiation is very, very toxic to DNA and to RNA. It can cause cancer in people if you are exposed to it too long, but it is very, very good at killing bacteria. It can disrupt viruses and kill viruses. So it's extremely, extremely good at disinfecting surfaces. And this has been used for many decades. Um, the robot is a GPS-controlled programmable robot. It is able to navigate rooms. It's able to navigate operating rooms and patient rooms like you're showing on the video. And uh, once it's actually navigated a room and been programmed, it can repeat the same program over and over and over. So you do a patient room or an operating room or a patient floor, elevators, whatever you want. And once you do it once, the controller can just press program and the robot autonomously can go wherever it needs to go in order to shine the light on the surfaces and disinfect the room. And at the end of that, I mean, you're testing this right now. What are you finding in terms of how clean and, and, and safe and virus free the room is after the robot's been through? So I can tell you that the majority of the tests have been about safety because UV light has been well tested in many, many other places. So the first thing we wanted to know was, can it be controlled easily? Can a person uh, work outside the room where the robot is safely? Uh, because you can't, you, the, there needs to be an operator that brings the robot where it needs to go. Um, so all of our tests on whether the light escapes through doors or windows or causes any damage within the room, those have all been really, really superb and pristine. Um, we've also been uh, working with the company to test uh, particular bacterial indicators. So we use standard uh, levels of bacteria and we test growth before and after and the UV light does what it's supposed to do. It's very, very powerful disinfectant. So where are you leaning? I mean, as I said, this is a test are and it leading to potential purchase. I mean, how much longer are so, you going to test? Are you thinking that this is where you're going to move? So, uh, you know, as a research institute, we aren't the <laughs> final word in how to purchase. And the other True. thing that you need to know is that um, this, has this has been a very uh, exciting uh, concept to be brought into Montreal. And as you know, Montreal has been the epicenter. So the robot is actually off for testing now in another hospital at the SHUM. And it's going to be used, uh, it's also going to be piloted in a CSLS day or two. Um, and we're working with the company towards um, solidifying the final purchase. We believe that, um, you know, uh, it, it's it, the, the beauty of the robot is that it is uh, very efficient. It can do what a human can do in less than half the time. And then um, once the robot is finished, people can come in and set up the room so that a patient can come in to the patient room much more rapidly than if it took uh, if, uh, under normal circumstances or go back to the operating room much more efficiently if there's a heavily soiled case. So it, it, it's, it's the combination of um, rapid disinfection, mm -hmm. faster than people, and safer because uh, if the robot goes through, then the levels of virus and bacteria are much, much lower, if not completely eliminated. 
and then the people who are setting up the room do not have the high risk of getting infected. And just so in case anyone was missing the reference, the SHUM is the Francophone Hospital Network and uh, the long-term care facilities you were referencing there, uh, Soins de longue durée. So that's where it's moving on exactly. for further testing. So uh, right. what I'm wondering is, you said it's faster than people, just I, I maybe see people perking up at all of this. Is this going to replace humans? Absolutely. So the, the idea is not to replace humans. The idea is to create an environment that's safer for our employees, safer for our patients. If you um, have to do a manual disinfection, obviously this has been going on for decades. If you have C. diff in the, in the uh, environment, if you have any kind of bacteria or viral infection, whether it's the flu or whether it's COVID-19, people still have to clean the rooms. And if the robot, for example, is able to autonomously go through, disinfect the walls, disinfect the services, disinfect the top of the bed, then when a person comes in to change the bed and set up the room for the next patient, the risk is diminished greatly. And so our workers will be able to do more rooms much more safely. Patients will be able to come into rooms much more quickly and much more safely. So it's really a combination of using excellent technology with our current manpower. I'm wondering, this is a first of its sort uh, in Canada and other hospitals and other health networks I'm sure will be looking to this as the testing continues. We're looking a little bit to the future, Dr. Mazur, and, and, and what may change. What do you see COVID-19 changing as far as robotic applications within hospitals? In the future. I think that we're I think that we're looking at upping our game in terms of being able to uh, protect people. Um, we're trying to understand how the robot and other sources of UV or other sources of uh, disinfection can help uh, recycle things like masks, which have been a, an issue. Um, it's been uh, difficult to keep up the supply. So we are be we're becoming much more creative in terms of other ways of recycling, of disinfecting, of being smarter with our resources. Um, and this is really important. I think we, <clears throat> we should not take for granted that um, you know, this will be uh, a limited thing. We've gone, uh, you know, we've gone 100 years between Spanish flu and COVID-19. But whether it's the swine flu, H1N1, we've gone the preparedness for SARS. We, we, we are returning to this paradigm over and over. And I think we really have to think carefully how we treat people, how we keep things clean, how we use uh, technology to assist us. Even this interview, I mean, we've been doing much more technology with our patients, telemedicine with our patients. Keeping people out of the hospital, I think, is a very important thing for public health and for safety. You're absolutely right, and we're talking about the uh, the spread and the success thus far with telehealth, It's uh, and people are calling for that to be expanded as well as a result of this. So robotics and AI and technology in general changing health care, and the, this is going to be a conversation that we continue to have in the days and months ahead. Thank you for this conversation, though. Great to see you, Dr. Mazur. It's great to, to uh, hear you and see you, and uh, uh, keep up the good work, and please keep safe.